lovelies! Thanks for voting in the community tab. You're helping me to deliver the content you really want to see. Today we're going to be reviewing metallic watercolor paints. I'm going through the Fine Tech F0602 color, Cool Color Palette, the Fine Tech F0603 Warm Color Palette, and the Colero Gold to Silver Palette called M600. I also don't review it in this video, but I've linked the 12 set F1200 from Fine Tech, which includes some of the colors from each of these palettes and is cheaper than buying all three of these palettes separately. So that is also an option. I have noticed by linking in the description box below that the palettes are much more expensive on Amazon than they used to be. I have not had a chance to check in-store prices, so keep that in mind. You may want to in explore in-store prices first, as Amazon seems to have doubled in price in the last year. Let's start with the swatches. I'm going to show the metallics both on white and black paper today separately. Let's look at the white first. I think it's worth mentioning that Coliro is either owned or partnered with Fine Tech. And for some reason, they're completely branded differently, but it seems that Coliro is owned or partnered. The story, the full story is really unclear, but I think it has to do with who actually does the, the production of the metallic watercolors and who does the distribution in certain countries. I have noticed there were other countries listed at certain years over the last five years. So I am not sure if there are also other brands that partner with Fine Tech. I'm not quite sure the whole story. I will say there are a lot of fakes on Amazon, so be careful when you're ordering metallic watercolors. If it says Fine Tech Palette or Colero Palette, you should be buying from that brand directly on Amazon or from whatever art store you're ordering from. So just be very careful because there are a lot of very good lookalikes, like they're they're bad paints, but they. They are, did a really good job of copying the branding, so really pay attention to who you're buying from on Amazon. Colero in particular used to be cheaper. Now they're about the same as the Fine Tech. And again, I'm not sure if that's because they used to be separate and now they're together or what the deal is, but the palettes used to be a lot cheaper than they are now. In fact, I've mentioned them on my channel as a cheap art material. Now I would say they're about, um, about the same price as the other ones, and so that's just something to keep in mind. I originally started using the Colero um, palette. My cousin recommended it to me. I've been using it since about 2018, and I've used it most extensively on wood and a little bit on paper, usually when mixed with other watercolors or on top of watercolors and, or um, as like a little accent or a highlight. It's one of my favorite things to add to pieces that have... Uh, stars or moons, especially there's one color in particular that you'll see that really looks good on my moon designs. Recently on my Twitch stream, I have started playing around with a black sketchbook, and so you will also be seeing some time lapses of the metallic watercolors, the fine tech metallic watercolors, on black paper. I would say all three of these palettes have great coverage on both white and black paper. It's just a matter of the tone that you're going for when you're using them. The cool thing is that almost all of the metallics have great opacity and saturation on their own straight out of the, the pan, but you can actually mix them with regular watercolors as well. My, I don't do this a ton. I do it sometimes. I'll mix the silver with certain colors or I'll mix some golds in with greens. Um, my cousin actually uses this pretty extensively. She mixes the silver with purples and blues to create shimmering galaxies with stars and um, she does a very good job of that. So that's also an option. While I've exclusively used brushes, I've also seen artists use these with calligraphy pens as well with some beautiful results. So that is also another option. If you are more comfortable using calligraphy pens, these different pans can be mixed with water and then used with a dip pen. Overall, I don't have a lot of criticisms about these metallics. I really enjoy Colero the most, um, the, the golds and the silvers. Although I do think the straight from Fine Tech palettes are a little bit better as far as um, opacity. Like you can, they have a wider range of gradients that you can do. And if you want the straight color, I think it's a little bit better on the Fine Tech colors than it is on the Colero. 
This used to make sense to me because the Coolero used to be cheaper, and so I always just assumed that the Fine Tech options had more pigment in them. But now that they're the same price, I'm not quite sure what the difference is as far as that goes. My favorite colors are the Tibet Gold from the Coolero set, the High Chroma Blue, and Platine from the Cool Palette, Hazelnuss, Rubin, and Tangelo from the Warm Palette. These pans were all in German when I purchased them, although I have seen them translated into English. I do believe it's the High Chroma Blue palette. Um, I'm not sure what Platine translates into. I haven't been able to find that one in English. Um, and then it would be Hazelnut, Ruby, and Tangelo seems to be the same in both languages. I do wish, and this is my, my one big critique out of all of the Colero and the Fine Tech, I wish all the little individual pans had the numbers, not the name, but the number of the specific color written on them because it would make it a lot easier to both review the individual colors but also to replace certain colors when you run out because they are all interchangeable. It is more expensive to do it this way, but if you want to build your own palette, you can buy the individual colors on their websites or on Blick. It is way more expensive in some cases. If you're going to be ordering more than six colors, it's going to be more expensive than ordering a set with six colors in it. However, if you only want one or two colors from each of the palettes, it's still going to be cheaper than buying all three palettes separately. So that is something to consider. Of course, then you don't have the case. So maybe ordering one set and then interchange some of the colors you don't like out of that set with individual pans might be a good option for you. This is something that works really nicely with most watercolor sets in general. If you're not buying two watercolors like I am and building your own palettes, when you buy watercolor palettes, especially Winsor Newton and other similar brands, you can remember which colors you like the best and then only buy those colors in the future after purchasing the original set. I do think that that's kind of nice, although I have, I do feel like some of these palettes are a little bit overpriced and the individual pans themselves do seem to be a little overpriced as well. All that being said, that's just a personal opinion. I am not aware of the chemical composition of metallic watercolors. I, I'm not familiar with that. I'm just more familiar with how they work. But all of that being said, I suppose for five to six dollars, since these last pretty long time and can be mixed with other watercolors to even extend them f their lifetime further, I suppose you could make quite a lot of money off of that individual color, therefore justifying the cost of it. While mixing the metallic colors with regular watercolors, I have found some very strange results, especially when using them on the black paper. It's not because the pigment reacts differently, you do have to play around and test out colors before you try to use them on, an on a finalized piece. I would do some testers, some paint swatches, play around with it in a sketchbook before you try to do something a little bit more final because sometimes they mix the way I expect them, but sometimes they really don't. One thing I found very interesting was when I was using the, um, the pl platine, I mixed it with some white gouache thinking that it would actually make it to be a softer, lighter silver, and it actually made it a darker gray, which was really fascinating to me to see how the two different pigments interacted with each other. So definitely play around if you plan to mix them with other watercolors. The next critique is more of a side note, not necessarily a critique of the paints themselves, but you are going to get the little tiny flakes, the mica flakes, pretty much everywhere. On your brushes, in your water containers, on your uh, watercolor palettes, it gets absolutely everywhere and it takes a while to get out of things. So definitely you have to do a lot more wash, either keep a separate pack of brushes just for the metallic watercolors or wash things pretty extensively if you're trying to then switch to um just straight watercolors without metallics because you'll find that the metallics find their way into your traditional watercolor pieces once you start mixing your, um, your water pans and your palettes and your brushes. 
While I pretty much exclusively use the metallic watercolors now for all of my highlights and details, I did used to use the Winsor Newton Gold ink. And if I feel like I need something that has a very opaque gold look, I will still use the ink, but very rarely I find that I can achieve a pretty opaque result from the Colero watercolor sets. I just have to let the water sit and absorb into the pan before I take the pigment onto the brush. These palettes use a lot of water to reactivate. Again, I'm not quite sure of the chemical composition of how they're made, and so I'm sure it has to do with how they are reactivated and turned into a paint once again. It's just, it takes a little bit to get used to when compared to the regular tubes that I am using normally. Overall, I would recommend all three of these palettes as really good metallic watercolor palettes. I hope to try other metallics in the future, but as each of these pans are pretty big investments, I tend to go with the ones that are more mid-range price level, which I feel are the Colero and the Fine Tech palettes right now. My only word of caution about using any other brands is to do your research because, like I said previously, there are a lot of fakes on Amazon and online in general where the opacity is just not up to par and you will get scammed if you are just using a product that is straight up mica with glue and has no color pigment to it. Um, there's just some hot messes. I've seen some pretty bad hot messes. Um, so just do your research on the particular brand that you're using and make sure that you are buying from them directly uh, to avoid the hassle of buying a palette that isn't going to work. I will also mention here that I have also heard of people being able to make their own metallic watercolors. I have not dabbled into that and that may be something that I will explore in the future. Um, if you have any good recommendations of other YouTubers that you've seen doing something like similar, please do leave them in the comment box below. Personally, I feel like using the straight metallics can be a lot of fun, but can sometimes cheapen a piece or make it seem not so professional if everything is in metallics. I think metallics need to be used wisely as a point of emphasis or a highlight. That's just my personal opinion, not a general statement. I do feel like the gold metallics can produce a similar effect to gold leafing, especially if you are more focused on selling digital prints. It'll appear the same as gold leafing does when photographed and reproduced, and it's much faster and much easier than gold leafing directly. Obviously, if you're looking to sell originals, you will be able to tell the difference quite easily. But it is an alternative worth considering if gold leafing seems a little too intimidating for you. The last thing I want to mention that doesn't really have to do with the paint itself, but just utilizing them in your artwork, it does make it harder to both photograph and scan your artwork when you are using these metallic watercolors, especially if you're using them straight. So that's just something to keep in mind for the way that you are producing content. If you are trying to produce a lot of prints or cards or stickers, you're going to need to think about how you're going to either scan it in from multiple directions and use a photo merge, or if you're going to use a high quality camera to photograph it and what your lighting is going to look like. These are all things that I tend to consider when using specific materials because I want to be able to reproduce my work and make more money off of the original piece without just selling the original by itself. So that's it for today. That's all I've got to say about these. I hope to explore different palettes in the future, but for right now, I think I'm pretty well off using just these three palettes as I explore this black sketchbook. I will be doing more casual, relaxing black sketchbook metallic watercolor sketches in the future on Twitch. I live stream on Mondays, Wednesdays, and Sundays. Feel free to pop on over there and try to catch me when I'm streaming. If you have any questions or comments, you can leave them in the description box below or drop them in the chat while I'm live streaming. Thanks so much for all your support, love, likes, comments. They all help my channel to grow and to reach more people, so I really do appreciate it. And until next time, remember to create love and travel on. I'll see you on Friday. Bye! Mm -hmm.